I drive has the uh, the one knob with the one menu button and the one knob turns. I ordered the Vivid Screen with the Smart View HD for installation in my 2007 BMW 650i convertible. It primarily consists of three primary parts which is here the Vivid Screen which replaces the screen in the dash of the BMW. This is the Multimedia Interface HD device which primarily connects to the Vivid Screen and the Smart View HD so it is the brains behind the Vivid Screen and this is the Smart View device that receives the signal from your smartphone. It also comes with several sets of cables with this one being the primary cable. It has other sets of cables to go with the device. Some are not used. It depends on your installation on which ones you want to use. But I did not install a camera so I primarily just used the Vivid Screen with the Smart View HD through the media, multimedia device. Here is the other cables. On the left here is the uh, USB extension device. That's for making future updates. This is this USB uh, power supply that goes from the multimedia device into the Smart View HD. This is the audio connection that goes from the uh, multimedia device to your auxiliary jack. And then this is the HDMI cable that goes from the Smart View to the multi multimedia interface device. I also ordered the installation tool set, and I primarily only use these ones on the bottom to remove the air conditioning vent that's housing the uh, four way flashers. To go over the major parts of the system a little more closely, I'll start with the Vivid screen. It comes with a protective film covering the screen. At the top are the two holes that they tell you in the directions to remove the screws and basically remove the old screen and insert this one in its place. Here is the back of the Vivid screen and basically you just follow the directions. You connect the cables from the system to the connectors. You have to flip the dip switches according to what you're installing and you connect the other cables on the side here on the side. Here is a closer view of the multimedia interface device. So you just follow directions. Again, this has dip switches to set on the top side. So you set them according to your installation. You connect the cables as they tell you to connect them in the directions. And it's very easy. Here is a smart view device again. This USB jack is for uh, connecting the USB extension cable so in case you need to do updates in the future you would connect the extension cable there. This is the back side of the Smart View HD device. So here's where your HDMI cable comes out and goes to your multimedia device. It has two power cord receptacles but you only really just use this one on the right side, the power in. That is a USB uh, mini uh, connection and that comes from the multimedia interface device. It gets its power directly from there. So you carefully remove the four-way flasher switch and there's a screw that's down inside and you can use a T15 torque wrench and it's very uh, difficult to see the actual position of the screw but it's right down in there so this shows a T15 wrench that can be used but I found you could also just use Allen wrenches so the T15 is equivalent to the Allen wrench 764 so you can easily use that Allen wrench to remove that screw and this other Allen wrench which is the 564 Allen wrench can be used to remove the screen uh, from the dashboard so once you remove the screw following the directions you would then use this air vent panel and I used one of those smart tools the little blue one being very careful not to damage the wood trim in the seam there and pulled the uh, air conditioning vents away from the dashboard. 
After removing the air vents, I removed the two screens as following the directions. The two screws that hold the screen in the top. So this is the back of the old BMW screen. So it has two connectors, the one on this side and the one on the other side. It's on the actual side of the, the screen. So you just disconnect those. Uh, this, uh, this connection here is a little tricky. You have to hold down the black part in the middle and slide the gray part to the right. Um, and I have another video that I'm going to try to splice into this video to show you more clearly how to do it. So in my dashboard, there was not enough room to install the multimedia device and the smart view behind the vivid screen. So I looked in my glove box, and in my glove box in the back, there was a small compartment covered with a latch. Um, and I'm not sure what this uh, one box is here uh, that's in the center. But I was able to slide the smart view in front of this. Uh, on in front in, into this slot first and then I slid the multimedia interface behind it and I was able to connect the connectors here um, there's only one connector that goes from the multimedia device up to the vivid screen and uh, I was able to snake that through the dashboard so it's just this one cable has the red on one end and so that end I brought down through the dashboard from this vivid screen and it was able to snake it through uh, the top of the glove box. Uh, there's a little uh, uh, empty spot next to the flashlight holder. So I removed the flashlight holder and was able to get the wire down through that connection. So here is the top part of the wire. So it comes up through the dashboard. So that's the only thing coming up through the dash. So I um, have the one wire coming up to the vivid screen. So then here again is the one wire. It goes from the uh, vivid screen in the dash down to the glove box. So the red wire is on the one side going down to the glove box and the top side has a black uh, wrap around the top side and that goes to the new vivid screen. This old cable that's connected to the old BMW on the left side uh, just disconnects from your old screen and connects to the new vivid screen. After following all the directions and connecting all the cables to include the audio cables to the auxiliary jack, I put it all together, uh, put the battery cable back on the car and uh, fired it up to make sure it would all work together. When I turn the car on, the, uh, the vivid screen automatically came to life and um, you follow directions by holding the menu button to switch between your video device. And then you can control the smart view and you can also control your your iDrive uh, by holding down the menu button for three seconds. So it works just like the directions and all the other in installation guides tell you to do. The tools look pretty neat and they look like they're pretty functional. Um, but because this installation seemed to be pretty easy, I didn't need to use any of these additional tools. I may use one when I run the actually finish running the audio cable to the auxiliary jack. Um, but at the present time, I don't plan to use one because I can get it up underneath the, uh, the molding around the edges. So since I didn't install the rear view camera or the front view camera, I didn't need to use this uh, power adapter that goes to the camera. I think it says um, I can't read it. Anyway, um, and then this one is for more, more audios, video adapters that you can install. I didn't uh, I didn't install any of the audio video adapters, but uh, if you wanted to install two more 
adapters you could, but they have to have the RCA connections rather than the HDMI. And there was a remote that was included, and uh, I believe that's for the uh, HD Flex device, but I didn't need to use that. And then this is the USB extension that is used to update the HD Flex if you need to in the future. But because mine is pretty accessible, I didn't need to install this. I may put it in in the future, um, but at the current time, I don't need to use it. So here is the final installation of the Vivid screen, mounted in the dash. It fits perfectly in place of the old screen. The screws perfectly lined up. The dash came back together with no damage to the trim. You don't want to use a lot of force to remove the air conditioning vent because it comes out very easy. Here is another view of the Vivid screen installed in the dashboard. As I explained, the installation of most of the devices went into the glove box. So in the glove box, we have the flashlight that's up here. I also have an iPad that was also installed when I bought the car, and that just lays in the glove box. But the main cable that was talked about was able to be run up here underneath. And so you can see it coming through right here. So that's the cable coming from the vivid screen. And so it comes across. And I had to cut this, uh, this latch in the door here a little bit. So inside the door, is the vivid screen. I'm sorry, is the uh, multimedia device. So the multimedia device is here with all the cables. In front of that is the uh, SmartView HD device with the antennas. So that's actually mounted and slid right, right in front of this device. And then all the cables fit snugly in here. So this other cable is the audio device. So that comes out. And I was able to put that up underneath the trim. So it comes along the trim, underneath here, along the floorboard, and comes around and back to the back of the car. So the audio cable continues to run up here underneath the trim of the door. It comes up under the trim, comes up under the seat, under the back seat. A little tricky snaking it around the corner here and so it comes right along the edge here so you can see the cord here so it comes right along here comes right up the side and then into the auxiliary jack so very clean insulation when everything's closed You don't see it at all. It's perfectly hidden and out of the way. And very clean install. Very easy. All right, so now for a demonstration of exactly how it works. So we have the iPhone here mounted. Um, we have a nice magnetic mount that just goes into the CD player. This is actually my wife's phone. So if you see that there is over a thousand Emails that haven't been read, that's her phone. I'm uh, taking the video with my phone. So what we need to do is uh, start the car. So when you start the car, it uh, comes up into its normal uh, uh, interface. The screen is now much better than the old screen. It's a high contrast, high quality screen. Um, it works just like as it did before with your uh, navigation screens, communication, your entertainment, everything works uh, just as it did before. So uh, where it gets a little different um, now is um, you have to uh, go to your iPhone and so um, you uh, have to connect to the smart view so that operates on a Wi-Fi so um, try to do this without uh, keeping it straight here so the Bimitech 
Water bucket shows up as a Wi-Fi access point, so it connects to it, and you'll see it uh, get the little check mark to it saying it's connected. So um, you can exit out of the Wi-Fi settings. Then all you have to do is hold down the menu button of your uh, iDrive, and you'll see the. Uh, Let's see if I can uh, show you here. So as you hold down the button, the, uh, the iDrive will change to the Smart View. So now that it's changed to the Smart View, you can go ahead and go back to your iPhone and do your uh, screen mirroring. And you change it to Smart View. And so uh, you should see uh, your Smart View change as it mirrors to the, uh, the new Smart View HD. And now you have your uh, your iPhone connected to the Vivid screen. So um, you need to make sure that your uh, your audio is changed to your auxiliary jack. So if you're not sure, you can uh, toggle through your audio settings as you see down there on the bottom left. Uh, mine's connected to the auxiliary. Um, I just scroll through, uh, pushing your uh, mine's actually programmed to my star button. So I'll we'll scroll through my different audio devices. So um, that's my iPod. So we're back to auxiliary. So now everything is going to run through the iPhone, through the auxiliary jack, uh, into the car. So now everything that we have, uh, we need to get back to the... Uh, so hold the button down again. And uh, we're back to the eye screen, uh, the vivid screen. So now um, all your... Uh, all your devices show right on your Vivid screen. So your uh, Google Maps uh, show up just as they would. So um, of course we're in the uh, DC area. So um, it shows up very well, very responsive. And so um, as you plug in your routes on your i screen or in your iPhone, it automatically comes up to your uh, your Vivid screen. So uh, it's a little. Uh, hard to see sometimes. Um, so now I'll, uh, I'll change to another app so you can see how this actually works. So like if you have Pandora, it'll actually play uh, through the car. controls on the steering wheel still work and if you're listening to Pandora you can even change back holding the button down and you're back to your regular screen so you can still do your navigation Let's turn the music down a little bit so you can still use your uh, your iDrive while the uh, system plays in the background so then the change back, you just hold the button down again, go back to the uh, smart view, very responsive. So if you wanted to, to uh, turn off your Pandora, you close that, and I'll give you a little show of uh, how the, uh, the video actually works. So if uh, you're sitting at a traffic light or you're sitting in the parking lot waiting for your wife, um, let's do all the time. Okay, so we're back. Um, to give you a little idea of how the video works, um, I actually have a sling player uh, running here. Um, so if you have a guide, um, you can go and, um, and actually watch live TV um, while you're sitting in a parking lot. Of course, it's not good to be driving um, while you're uh, watching video. Um, so with Sling Player, of course, you're using your cellular bandwidth, um, but it works very well. This, um, this is showing them with the iPhone that uh, it's currently in the AirPlay mode, and so um, it's coming up to the screen and it's buffering. And again, your audio is coming through your uh, your sound system here. If you turn the volume up, uh, you can hear a little bit. Um, I'm David Culver, NBA. So, um, very clear again. 
a very good screen quality. Alexandria section of Fairfax. Change. So should your bed. Not just for of course, it's going to run only as good I'm as Jim your uh, and running for Congress so close to Washington. Your uh, bandwidth, uh, your LTE. Of course, it's raining here right now in the DC area, so uh, um, it's not working very well. Um, just give you another app. Um, so we have a ESPN here. Uh, so um, come back into it. ESPN. Have our entertainment. If you have VLC or anything else, you um, can certainly play it here. Um, trouble with my audio but uh, or the video but the, uh, the apps work um, again it depends on your bandwidth so um, here is a little more of uh, the video so this is the uh, ESPN uh, screenshot um, so again it's uh, playing on the iPhone but it's airplayed up to the screen so um, running very well very clear it's in full screen mode right now um, so uh, depends on your video source, it's going to play in full screen. But if you have videos or something that's uh, downloaded, of course, to your device, it would show up uh, very easily um, on your uh, on your Vivid screen. So here's just another example. Um, if you have YouTube app, a lot of people like to watch YouTube. Of course, we have. Uh, the uh, vivid screen installations here so uh, you can actually watch it uh, on your car um, on how to install it so to uh, get into full screen you can uh, get the idea and uh, watch him explain it how to install it of course that uh, demonstration is with the rear view camera I didn't think it was necessary since the car already had has the sensors on it um, for parking so um, I just did the uh, vivid screen and the smart view HD and it was very simple it took me uh, less than two hours and uh, no drilling no screwing uh, uh, difficult screws um, I only had to cut out one corner of the plate that's in the glove box um, but everything uh, went very smooth so uh, that's my review and the demonstration of the vivid screen I'm very pleased with it and uh, hope to have many years of success and enjoyment of this new system.